Hey everyone! I know how much you love the Skibidi Wars multiverse, and I'm sure you're eager to see my analysis of the episodes where the legendary Titan cameraman returns. Well, I highly recommend you to put all your business on hold for the next 10 minutes because this is going to be epic! Today I'm going to analyze episodes 69, 70, and 71, and then I'll show you all the secrets and easter eggs you definitely missed. What improvements did Titan Cameraman get? What do Skibidi Wars and Skibidi Multiverse by Dom Studio have in common? And is it true that Tri-Titan destroyed Toilet Inventor for good? Make some tea and grab your snacks and be sure to watch this video till the end, you'll definitely love it. Let's go! I finished my last analysis on a battle between Speaker Titan and Toilet Phantom, where we were made clear about the return of Titan Cameraman. Also in the comments, there was plenty of controversy about the appearance of Toilet Phantom. And I agree with you guys. We saw something similar in the game Five Nights at Freddy's. Well, it's high time for episode 69. It begins with Phantom TV Titan lifting several objects to the air, including two cars, an anti-parasite cannon, and a container. This is an ability we haven't seen before, and it seems that after Phantom took over TV Titan's mind, he was able to learn new skills such as the double red and white glow, the ability to move underground, and also to control objects with the power of his mind. I think it's all about the red sphere. During the glow, we hear the THX sound, and mind that in the original series we heard it when Titan TV Man used the red light, which made all the skibbity toilets flush themselves. But it seems this orb has a secret power and has a few more abilities that TV Titan didn't know about. Anyway, the bastard throws it all at a bunch of cameramen, but thank God the Phantom Toilet is as blind as the G-Man, who shot at his own crowd of toilets in episode 58. And that's how all the blood survived. Dude, leave those cameramen alone. There's someone more important right in front of you. Why don't you channel it all into Titan Speaker Man? This guy is landing epically, and he seems ready for round two with that prick. He also has no protection on his legs like in the last episode, so why don't the Titans stop by the lab on his way there so the scientists can quickly fix that? Probably the reason for it is Phantom being able to teleport and to move to this place in the nick of just one second. But Titan has no such ability, so he had to travel hundreds of kilometers on a jetpack to get here from the winter location. Titan also has no special protection on his head that was present in the original series. Titan takes a few shots from the cannons on his hands but Phantom doesn't really care, and teleports directly to Speaker Titan. He then delivers a claw strike right to his head. Here you can see TV Titan has a neck that looks like a human one, but in the original series Titan had a special device, which means that in this multiverse TV Titan is half human, looks like that punch hurt Titan badly, and Phantom is getting ready to fire the final shot from the sphere. Damn it, guys! I'm starting to feel sorry for this dude. I mean, just think about it. Throughout all the episodes of this multiverse, he has never once managed to win. He loses it all the time. Please show your support to him in the comments. But we're here for an epic battle, my friends. And Titan Cameraman comes to the poor thing's rescue. He grabs the prick's head and smashes it against the building. He does this a few more times and then epically throws the breathless body away as if it was rubbish. It seems the claws on the back of the Phantom TV Titan wasn't ready for this and just disappeared which looked really funny. The improved Titan looks almost the same as the original version, but his core is located a little lower. There's also an inscription under the camera, although what it says exactly is really hard to understand. Titan Speaker Man looks at his bro and shows a token of appreciation to him, and then TV Woman appears and waves to the Titans. It seems that we are watching this episode on behalf of Elite Cameraman, because as soon as POV sees TV Woman, he runs to her. Titan Cameraman raises TV Titan's head, and we see the Toilet Phantom loosing his mind. And what happens next is really hard for me to explain. Phantom teleports directly to TV Woman and then just disappears. Why did Phantom retreat and not destroy TV Woman? You would think that she hypnotized Phantom and made him retreat. But from my past analysis, I know that her radiation is much weaker, and I don't believe she could do that. Could there be a special connection between them? After all, Phantom Toilet had several opportunities to destroy TV Woman, but he didn't do it and that's very strange. I also have a theory as to why Phantom did not take over the mind of the improved Titan Cameraman, but I will tell you about it a bit later. Then the freed TV Titan comes to his senses, and the next 70th episode begins. We see two cameramen doing something to POV. Next to him is an elite military Skibidi Toilet. That was in the 44th episode of the original series. 
The cameraman gives a thumbs up afterwards and turns around to see who POV is this time. This episode's events will take place on behalf of a special drone. And now we have a unique opportunity to fly in this amazing city like Spider-Man. We can immediately notice Skibidi Saw from the original series. This is the same dude who sawed off Titan TV Man speakers in episode 47, and as I said on my main channel, it was this jerk who controlled fake G-Man's body in episode 65. We fly on, and all we see, considering that our drone has actual eyes, is a spider toilet that we saw it in the 49th episode of this multiverse. On the roof you can see a big speaker man. This guy is there all alone and I don't know what exactly he's doing there. And after that, the real epic begins. Titan Speaker Man finally destroyed someone. Dude, just tell me where you are and I'll send a birthday cake with your name written on it. At the same time, we see the vacuum toilet that TV Titan is fighting with. He uses his glow and it seems like this sphere has another ability to make Skibidi Toilets fart because I don't know what other kind of yellow smoke can actually come out of the vacuum toilet's ass. POV flies over an underground parking lot and we see another old friend who's back. This is my favorite Tri-Titan. This guy got some upgrades too. We knew he was in the lab too, thanks to the phone from episode 68. But I had no idea this monster would come back so quickly. He has two more speakers on his legs and they look more advanced than the old versions. He has the same speakers all over his body and the TV has special protection now. Also, the TV itself looks different with a purple image on its screen that resembles a core. It's as if this TV is showing what's behind it. And that's where the Tri-Titan core is. Big Daddy now has three main cameras, and it resembles the main Alliance Lab logo from the original series that we saw it in episode 23 in the place where we were teleported by the TV woman in episode 49. He also has a fin on his head with a red cannon similar to Titan Cameraman's and Tri-Titan's appearance. In my humble opinion, he is starting to look more and more like the Giga Chad version of Titan Cameraman. I'm afraid to imagine what this blood is capable of. Episode 71 is on your screens. Titan Cameraman lands epically and is looking for someone to use his hammer on. But as he is suddenly attacked by a mad toilet inventor right out of the building, it gets to be not that simple. Tri-Titan helps his bro by grabbing that worm. Strangely enough, there isn't even a hole left in the building the leech crawled out of. The worm's name is Driller Machine, which we can learn from the episode description. But that doesn't really matter though, because Tri-Titan destroys it with a powerful kick to the ground. POV turns around, and we see several Skibidi toilets, among which there is a Skibidi bathtub. The exact same one appeared in episode 55 of the original series, and the very first appearance of a Skibidi bathtub was in episode 41, where it was destroyed by Titan TV Man with a red radiation. There are also three elite military Skibidi toilets and three Lil Swat toilets. Each of them have a blue logo. The same logos were in the Skibidi multiverse from creator Dom Studio in episode 9 and 8. In the original series, SWAT toilets had this logo too. They start firing at the Tri-Titan and it causes a huge explosion. But unfortunately for the toilets, the Titan doesn't care about their attacks. And this is a reference to episode 58, where the Skibidi army also fired several powerful shots at the Titan. But he didn't care as well. I don't quite understand why Titan Cameraman didn't help his friend at that moment, because he was right next to him, and with one blow of his hammer he could destroy all of the Skibidi. In any case, Tri-Titan is using his drone, and it looks like the drone from the last episode, but with two camera guns, one shot of which destroys all Skibidi toilets. Is it just me, or are there slackers in the Skibidi army? Only the Skibidi bathtub took serious damage and fell on the elite military after the shot. Dude, get up immediately! Did you get destroyed because your friend landed on your head? Next, we see the drone returning to Tri-Titan, and it reminds me a lot of Clockman Titan's shurikens from the Skibidi multiverse. They also obeyed the Titan's will and returned to him in the boomerang way. Tri-Titan then flies away, followed by a thumbs up from the Titan cameraman that goes after him too. He seems to really respect this guy. It's the first time we've seen Titan giving a thumbs up to an alien. The wings of the Tri-Titan have the exact same shape as the wings of the Titan Cameraman, but here you can see that the Titan's wing is slightly damaged, most likely after the toilet inventor flew into it. But there is no happy ending in this episode, because as soon as Titan Cameraman takes off, POV is getting attacked by the toilet. Behind him lies... Oh my god, no! Behind him we can see the G-Force car and I don't have the energy to describe how angry I am that it's destroyed. If you don't understand why I hate this car so much, I highly recommend watching my last analysis. 
Do you folks remember what I said about having a theory as to why Phantom didn't take over the mind of the enhanced Titan cameraman? It's because we saw TV Titan's neck. It was humanoid one. I think Phantom was only able to take over his mind because he's half human, but Titan cameraman is fully robotic, so he can't do the same thing to him. In the original series, Speaker Titan also had a human neck, but I think Phantom has little interest in this poor guy. I suspect he is too weak and not that sweet of a fruit to him. Write your theories in the comments why Phantom decided to leave without a fight and who you think is capable of defeating Tri-Titan. And that was me, Isotoilet. See ya!